As Americans everywhere struggle, the spotlight turns to Congress. Here is what Speaker Nancy Pelosi told CNBC earlier Friday. We've had three bills that have been bipartisan. I think right now we need a fourth bipartisan bill. And I think the bill could be very much like this, the bill we just passed. I'm very much in favor of doing some of the things that we need to do to meet the needs, clean water, more uh, broadband, and the rest of that. That may have to be for a bill beyond this. In recent days, the speaker had talked up infrastructure, as did President Trump. But that may now be delayed at this point, as Senate Republicans swat away the idea. In fact, in an interview earlier this week, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell told me it would, quote, take a lot of convincing for him to pursue infrastructure at this time. Yamish, when you talk to your sources at the White House and on Capitol Hill about this, quote, phase four debate, the fourth round of negotiations, what are you hearing? Is this going to be bipartisan and focused on health care or not? What I'm hearing from White House sources and from Capitol Hill sources is that they both are really interested in doing an infrastructure bill. Now, Nancy Pelosi this week was talking about doing an infrastructure bill focused on a broadband internet because so many people are needing the internet as a lifeline to go to work, to speak to loved ones. She also was talking about clean water systems because, of course, so many people are washing their hands and there are so many communities in this country that still, in some cases, don't have running water or don't have access to clean water. President Trump was talking about an infrastructure bill and he was talking about roads and bridges, but it sounded like there might really be some overlap there and that there might be finally this point where an infrastructure bill could materialize. Of course, this is something that we've been hearing about ever since President Trump took office. Um, there were times where he was talking about the infrastructure week in the middle of all sorts of scandals that he was weathering. But then Senator McConnell poured cold water on that in that interview that you just referenced um, with you. He basically said it sounded like that he was not as interested in doing that. So it's really an interesting thing to, to hear whether or not it might be House Democrats and the White House that's start working together. Of course, as we know, President Trump and Speaker Nancy Pelosi still are not speaking to each other. So it's hard to understand whether or not those two portions of the government would work together. But there, we did get phase three without them speaking together. So it could be that uh, White House officials, legislative officials work with Nancy Pelosi to get a bill done. Jerry, you've written a lot about this possible next stimulus package this week. Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker, has announced an oversight committee to look at phase three. What does your reporting tell you about where this is all going to go beyond the political firefight that Yamish just referenced? Well, you know, I, I interviewed Speaker Pelosi early in the week, and she was, in fact, talking about a big phase four bill. It seemed that she wanted to take the lead on this one, and Mitch McConnell had the lead on the last one. She did want to include infrastructure, and President Trump, as she well knew, is interested in that topic as well. And so we were talking then about the possibility of a very big economic stimulus bill, including uh, a lot of infrastructure, uh, including uh, fixes to hospitals and roads and, and lots of other things. And then, as you suggested, it switched a little bit when Speaker McConnell uh, uh, spoke up against that idea. I think we now may, now, now may be looking at two more bills, one to plug some of the holes in the health care system and the medical supplies that already uh, have been found since the last one was passed, and then maybe a follow-on one later in the year to do infrastructure. I think it's important to keep in mind, Bob, the the, just the sheer magnitude of what we're talking about here. If you put the $2 trillion stimulus bill that was already passed, plus the two earlier bills before that, plus the money the Fed is pouring into the economy, you have more than $6 trillion from the federal government going out into this very troubled economy right now. The, the whole overall economy is only $21 or $22 trillion. So we're talking about the federal government putting back into the economy a quarter of the, uh, uh, the nation's gross output as a way to keep things afloat. And that's probably one reason why the financial markets haven't been even worse over the last couple of weeks than they have been. Peter, it was just a week ago here at this table that we were talking about President Trump's belief that maybe the economy could reopen by Easter. Now, a week later, he seems to be moving toward accepting the grim reality he faces. On Sunday, he said now it's now going to go until April 30th, all the social distancing and the stay-at-home guidelines. What has this week revealed to you as a student of the presidency about President Trump? 
Yeah, I think that this is a week when the stark numbers that uh, Dr. Birx and uh, Dr. Fauci presented began to really sink in, that, in fact, this is not going to go away. There's no miracle here. That This is, in fact, going to be a longer-term problem than he had hoped it was going to be. And the message he gave on that briefing, I think it was on Tuesday, he said Americans have to be prepared for a very, very, very tough couple of weeks. Now, it may be longer than a couple of weeks, and it may be that he's still optimistic more than his health advisors. I think you saw today the disparity between the president's view and his health advisor's view when he announced the CDC's new guidelines saying that most Americans, when they're out in public, should go ahead and wear a mask. And then he immediately said, but I'm not going to do that, right? So he yet to this day uh, is fully accepting the viewpoints of the medical advisors around him. But it does feel like, uh, you know, there has been at least a little bit more of an acceptance of just how grim this can be. I think somebody got to him and said, this is not going away soon. Among other things, he looked at the uh, hospital in his own uh, uh, borough of Queens, Elmhurst uh, Hospital, and saw the pictures of them being overwhelmed there. He's mentioned several times a friend of his, a developer who's in the hospital, apparently may have coronavirus and in a coma. Uh, these seem to have gotten through to him. And the other thing our reporting showed, and I think your paper did as well, is he was shown polling by his political experts, his political advisors, saying, hey, the public doesn't want to return to business as usual too soon, prematurely, if it means that the virus really won't be contained. The public wants this to be contained. And I think that also convinced him to uh, pivot when it came to these, you know, this Easter idea of, of, of returning back too quickly. Yamish, how committed is the president, based on your reporting, to this current position? We have seen him zig and zag over the last few months about where exactly he wants to go. What are the people around him, from Jared Kushner and others, saying? How do you, your sources see it all? The feeling I get from my sources and that I get from just watching the president is that he is someone who is still re reluctant to tell the American people that this could be something that could upend their lives all the way into the summer and could be completely disruptive to the economy up until the summer. I think Peter's point about the idea that he was talking about a pre the mass and President Trump was saying repeatedly, this is voluntary. He said at one point, maybe it's a good, maybe it's not, maybe it'll help, maybe it won't. I'm certainly not going to do it because I don't want to be seen well welcoming leaders to the Oval Office, even though, of course, none of them are coming right now. But I don't want to be seen at the Oval Office with a mask on, so I'm not going to be doing it. So you already see there the president really, um, I think, bat not backtracking or at least hedging more than health officials. I think the other thing that really moved the president, though, was the fact that, one, the epicenter right now is New York. That's where the president is from. It's where he grew up. Queens is seeing so much issue, so many issues right now, and he's watching it on television. And the, the pictures of body bags at hospitals really moved the president. He brought it up three or four times this week. And it's something that really stuck with him. And it was, of course, happening again in Queens, where he grew up. So I think this is a president that's always been moved by TV. And he said this week, I'm watching all of this on TV, admitting that he spends a lot of time watching to see what's going on, on in the ground. So I think that when we see journalists bringing those images to America, they're also bringing those images right to the president, and it's moving him. Jerry, any final thoughts on that theme about President Trump and what you're seeing? Well, I, it just felt to me like this was the week it all came home to the White House, and there was no more pretending this was either going to be short or could be dismissed in any way. I mean, there's Gallup survey data out this week that show that 46 million American people may have already been laid off or had the, their hours at work cut. Well, you know, at this point, everybody in the country knows what's going on. Everybody in the country knows how serious this is in both medical and economic terms. And this just felt like the week when everybody agreed Indeed. there's no denying that.